work. And I'll be brief uh, as much as I can. This is a short one. But it's actually demonstrating, I was until April this year, I was director of the Knowledge, Innovation and Capacity Group in uh, UNDP in New York. And one of the things that we realized was that the more single focused take on organizations where you try to work inside and even from the outside of a single organization is at least limited if you want to help others to tackle uh, a number of broader problems high on the agenda today. So, so if you talk about, I mean, you mentioned the example of uh, nutrition that demands collaboration across sectors. But if you take climate change, if you take uh, a number of other global problems, uh, they actually demand a lot of collaboration. And it's not only collaboration between ministries, it is as much collaboration between different stakeholder groups, civil society, government, academia, private sector, uh, across all so sorts of boundaries. So in a sense, the ambition of this development work, which is still work in progress, uh, was to say, how can we help actors work across the boundaries that impede them from finding solutions to their problems? We called it uh, uh, collaborative capacities. Uh, and it's, it's also built very much on, on the interest in complexity as a phenomena. Uh, complexity as different from complicated. A computer is complicated, and I would be hopeless if I was asked to explain how it works. But it actually works according to very specific rules. When it doesn't work, it doesn't work because the rules have been broken. But there are rules behind it. There's a logic. Complexity, on the contrary, is when multiple actors take decisions based on what other actors do. That is not predictable in the same manner. Those of you who play soccer, which I assume is most of you, will know that in a soccer game you start with one approach to the game, but you change it as it go along because suddenly you may find yourself to be under pressure which you hadn't expected. So, so that's the complexity, is a number of actors taking decisions based on what others are doing. We have, as a consequence, competing agendas, unpredictability, interdependence, and power imbalances. A power imbalance is not a consequence, it's actually as much a cause for, for uh, complexity. So the, the issue is how do you help actors uh, act in situations uh, of complexity? And it's been normal in the discourse over the last years to talk about complexity in fragile situations. My take is that complexity ex extends much beyond fragile situations. Uh, and we, don't have, we only have to go outside this house, or we can even stay within it, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to find levels of complexity that implies that linear reform trajectories and change processes in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs does not happen, and they have not happened for the last 25 years, where I've had the luxury of following them over years. So we don't have to look at South Sudan if we want to look at mess and complexity. Sorry, I didn't say mess, I said complexity. Now, the, 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 the key argument is that complexity and certain sorts of global problems and provision of global collective goods will demand collaboration across all sorts of boundaries. And it's, it's from the biologist working with the sociologist, we know that's not easy for neither of them, or the engineer working with the political scientist, again a challenge for both usually. So we, we say that such an, a focus uh, has to uh, or this has to focus on engagement, on creativity and innovation, helping people to cr be creative, which demands space. You will see this is not so far from what we heard in the morning. It's also about results, but maybe a different sort of results. And it's about helping people to be more resilient to the changes they have to encounter all day. I would personally like a lot more of resilience. Uh, so I also need to develop my collaborative skills. There are multiple challenges, I'll not read through all of them. One thing is the ex ex uh, expanding amount of, of data. Uh, this is also a response to the fact that, that, that uh, modern technology, big data approaches, actually gives us new tools and new challenges to work on that, that 
again, uh, it would be wrong to believe, as some do well with Twitter or with big data, the whole uh, game is changing. I don't think it is. But nonetheless, it's new opportunities and new challenges of how to work in complex environment. So this is just some of the multiple. I should say that it's my, my <laughs> former colleague sent me this yesterday. So, so uh, which the last one will disappear. How do we tap into emerging technologies and work better together? But the whole point is increasingly no single actor is able to solve a, a, a specific problem. Increasingly, say, urban problems, you have this mass of energy and people and power in the cities, big cities, but even there you would often see the need to collaborate not only across sectors in, in municipal affairs, but also with national level governments, with the rural hinterland, etc., etc. So these are the kind of challenges we see that people have and, and, and need to meet. It's not phrased in terms of political economy. It's not uh, so much phrased in these terms of, well, the power word is there, but the politics word is not strongly there. This reflects to some degree that this is UNDP. And for historical reasons, there's some anxiety uh, of, of saying the P word too directly still. I actually think the bank is a little more advanced there and a little less shy, but UNDP tends uh, still to be quite shy. Now, what is it we propose? We say ma making sense is a circ uh, circular, pushing through and adapting proactively. And that is not very difficult, different from what you heard this morning. Making sense is a quest for actually getting data. It's actually making sense of what is out there, not only data, uh, as raw data, you also have to construct the narrative, would be how, how Matt said it this morning. Uh, you would push through, you need drivers of this change processes. So, th so there's a need for this effort behind it, and then you need to adapt proactively because the conditions under which you work change all the time. So this is, of course, again, just another set of concepts that enable us to put in uh, more structured elements when we try then to help partners uh, enhance their collaborative capacities. Sectors, organizations, communities, common understanding, set of shared priorities, yeah, competing agendas, a push through reform admits uh, competing agendas. It's not very different from what we have heard before. Transform an idea into action by building and maintaining uh, support necessary to implement reform policies and change programs successfully. So this is all about the coalition building stuff, the change management stuff, and then adapting, identify and respond to change as it occurs and co-op stakeholders into the monitoring evaluation process. I, I like better the phrasing of short learning loops uh, where, you, where you're not waiting for monitoring. This is phrased in the, in the old uh, monitoring evaluation jargon. Again, uh, the board of UNDP is, is demanding that we use that jargon, but I actually think it's unhelpful compared to talking about short learning loops where managers and those immediately involved in this are directly participating, which is a big thing not happening with these uh, setups where monitoring is separated from management and evaluations comes when everybody has gone home. Needs across sectors, across institutions, across governments. Uh, I, I think we see in some areas, and I think the Rio conference, for, for whatever it did not achieve, one of the things it demonstrated was actually that where there, there is some progress to report on sustainable development, it's not least where researchers, governments, private sector, and civil society has found a reason to work together. The most beautiful example I have come across is actually not from a developing country, but it's from uh, the Baltic Sea. They talk about triple helix co collaboration. It's Sweden and Finland and all the countries around the Baltic Sea where researchers, municipalities, national governments, and industry is going together to try to improve the environmental conditions of the Baltic Sea. Long-term task, not 100% successful, but nonetheless impressive 
and with solid funding from the European Union, by the way. But that is an example on, of such a, in this case, triple helix, and, and I would invite a quadruple helix, if you can say that, also taking civil society into the equation. Oh. So, uh, what my colleagues have done here is try to say that, of course, we, are not, we do not have the same level of readiness for collaborating, and, and they have then identified what they call a, a continuum of readiness uh, for where you are, so that we are not coming and saying, wow, now we should all sit together and collaborate, because that often is simply not possible. There's neither the incentives nor the capacities to do so. So this is accepting that sometimes, or you, you work siloed, that limits the number of problems you can actually address. And of course, the, the coach, the facilitator, the role of a partner that, that try to leverage change would be to try to help people to look beyond the silo. But there may be very, very good reasons why they don't. It can be extremely painful if, if the system is built on loyalty. If you then look across the silo when you're not at the top of the silo, then you will get punished severely. You are not expected to break that loyalty by going uh, to the side. So there are very good reasons sometimes for people not doing it. So coming and say, oh, you are silent, you, you, you can't collaborate, is unhelpful and, and only shows uh, the lack of understanding uh, that you could come with. So siloed, consultative, cooperative, collaborative, diverse responses. But the whole point of this is try to leverage platforms, if you will, for collective action to address problems that cannot be addressed within the small silos. And these problems are increasingly what we are all struggling at, not only in developing countries, but actually also in developed. So, participatory analysis, common understanding. I don't think there's a lot of new here, again. Uh, that's not the point, but this is a packaging where we deliberately try to go uh, beyond the traditional focus on the public sector, so now we look at that, or the private sector, now we look at that, or the civil society, now we look at that, and say that a state, if that concept still has some meaning, uh, is precisely not only government. It's the combination and the interaction between the different stakeholder groups and the different interests, so that the articulation eventually become more pro-developmental than it was before, uh, which is a fairly modest ambition level. Oh, let me just, on this one, note that some of the thinking behind this is taken from social innovators, uh, from design thinking, which a number of, of leading branding, marketing, innovation companies have developed, uh, where they prototype, they make sense, they make very quick prototyping. Three months would be an extremely long time for much many of these guys. They do it in two days or two weeks. Uh, but the thinking behind it, go out and look what is there. Prototype means test and fail. And the space for failure has to be there. Uh, learn from that, do something else until you find something that seems to work. And only at that point in time do you begin to think of scaling up. That is innovation work. Innovation is not being an innovator, it's about specific methodologies on how you go about doing your stuff. And some of this is inspired by what, uh, what, what we felt was at least very useful and exciting stuff going on in the, so, in the fields of social entrepreneurship and social innovation. So it's, it's very much inspired for that. Oh, I think I'm going the wrong way here. Sorry for that. So, we have, or they have, because I'm no longer employed by that company, uh, UNDP, uh, but they have a collaboration platform. They are developing this. I can say this has been tested in practice, but it's actually a response also to what could be, and I say could be, because UNDP is also a bureaucracy, uh, but it could be a comparative advantage for an organization like UNDP because if it has a uh, comparative advantage, then it is, it's 
seemed to be fairly neutral. It's not perceived to come with a strong agenda. It's also perceived, rightly so, to be not as efficient as you would wish and not always able, for many good reasons, to listen as carefully as it should. But nonetheless, it could be the type of a donor, if you will, that could play the kind of facilitating role that these more sensitive approaches would call for. And it's not an organization filled with money. So this was just to, to add to what we have heard so far. And I'm not going to say more about it. Thank you very much.